chapters today, and that would be The Silver Doe and Xenophilius Lovegood. If I rush through his name, I can get it out. Yay! Bit of a weird title today. Because um, you'd think you'd be bouncing back into things. Which is something I also played with, but... Everything here is becoming more of a balancing act as they're moving themselves sort of up out of this low area. We'll dip back into it again, like I said, uh, but we're, we're sort of, we're moving up. But they, the Golden Trio needs to be really careful in these moments that they're not sort of throwing that opportunity out the window. So it's a it's a big balancing act. Before I get into that full discussion of the balancing act, uh, there is sort of a part one that I would like to talk about, which is why the frick does Snape decide there needs to be an, ex an additional test of this lot <laughs> by putting the sword in water and then it's I have an issue with this uh, because sort of like Harry ends up saying it, it, it seems odd because if it, if it was supposed to be easy the person would have just left the sword out now, part of the argument can be that Snape knew he needed to distract everybody by using the pool so that he could get away, because Ron did see him, saw somebody moving, and would have been moving towards him if he hadn't gone after Harry because Harry was in the water and wasn't coming back up. So that is a possibility, and it's a logical possibility, but there's also a question of this test. Is it a test? Um, for proper Gryffindors. We know, of course, it's a Slytherin that's planted it, so is there a Slytherin side to this that goes beyond Snape just needing the distraction so he can run? Um, uh, we certainly know that tests have been a thing. Uh, you can just look at the entirety of the Philosopher's Stone as proof of that. Um, but why is it sort of resurging now? Why is this a moment? Um, because it's not just the test of the sword in the pool, it also then becomes a test of Ron to be able to actually kill the Horcrux. And I do agree with Harry needed to be Ron. Ron needed to have a claim in the stakes of this entire thing. Because once he's become so involved to that point, we aren't going to run into this issue or really even this question, though Hermione will bring it up, but between the two boys, it will never be a question again of whether or not Ron is going to leave again because he's involved. Um, so we do have sort of this, these two sets of tests, um, both prompted by Slytherins, both faced by Gryffindors, uh, that need to be passed together. Neither of these people could actually pass these tests alone. Um, so it's sort of interesting to see that test aspect pop back up at the end. Um, it seems suddenly out of place, like as out of place as a sword in the pool in the woods. <laughs> because I'm also a bit of an Arthurian nerd, I would like to point out the similarities, of course, to Excalibur um, coming up out of the water. Water and swords do have this mythic quality that they go together. Um, so that was sort of. I was looking at it again and I was like, oh, does that make Snape the Lady of the Lake? 
because in some accounts the Lady of the Lake is also the one that imprisoned Merlin and killed him and oh my god. <laughs> Snape is Lady of the Lake. So you can see how just weird things got there because now I'm just like, oh my god, I want to write about this. I want to write about everything. I don't have time. I've got classes. <laughs> So, I'm a little curious your opinions of these tests um, and if they're effective or not, um, what needs to actually be learned here, and uh, how these guys handled it well. And part two, balancing all of this out. <laughs> because across these set of chapters we do have this recognition again of needing to balance out between trusting themselves and trusting other people. <laughs> because the moment Hermione's just like, I think we should go see a Xenophilius love good. Harry's just like, we are literally gonna have a second version of freaking Godric's Hollow. Do you really want to do that? And he is in fact right. That is sort of what we're going to have, um, complete with the explosion. <laughs> Um, but it is, again, this recognition that they need information, and they don't have it themselves, so they have to try and trust others. And part of this is trying to get the radio to work, and part of this is going to go see the love goods. Additionally, we also have a balance between listening to instincts in ourselves and trying to talk it out. Uh, for example, Harry following the dough. He was following his instincts in that moment, um, and that worked well. But it is a recognition of maybe, maybe you shouldn't just walk off into the woods by yourself in the middle of a war. But there is also this recognition that Harry has to convince Ron. His instincts say Ron has to do this, but he has to convince Ron that it's something Ron should do. Uh, and I think that's going to be one of my favorite moments, is he lays it out to Ron afterwards. Like, you saved my life, and you pulled out the sword, and you uh, killed the Horcrux. That's pretty cool, and Ron's going, it doesn't feel super cool, and Harry's going, I've been telling you that for years. It doesn't feel as cool, it feels terrifying. Um, but it is this recognition that that has to be talked through. You can't sort of just project, like, my instincts are telling me this. That needs to be explained. You need to balance out your ability to listen to your own head and your ability to talk things out with other people. And then to go on and follow through with these choices, which is Again, another balancing act, balancing out, discussing all of this with actually doing something. Because that's important. Action is important. So again, we're having this problem where they are starting to stagnate and they want to keep on a roll. They've just destroyed another Horcrux and they've got the Sword of Gryffindor and they've got Ron back and can we keep moving? Do, 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 do. Yes, we can keep moving, but are we moving in the correct direction? Arguably, no. Which is funny because Hermione and Harry are going to switch perspectives on this shortly. <laughs> Which is Harry going, we're supposed to be focusing on the Horcruxes, and Hermione going, but I think this is important, to Harry going, I think this is important, and Hermione going, we need to focus on the Horcruxes. It's a balancing act. The, the Hollows and the Horcruxes are a balancing act that these kids are going to have to face down and figure out, and one of them is going to have to get dropped off. Because it's impossible to keep that balance, because that balance is sort of way up here. And they need to balance it down here. So do I agree that they need to go and see, see the love goods? No. But is everything that they've known up to this point pointing that, that, them in that direction? 
Yes. Should Xenophilius's sudden cowardness be a freaking clue? Yes. But again, we are running to this issue of some people can't make that balancing act. So it's very possible that Xenophilius is just saying all of this stuff but not willing to act on it himself. So that accusation of cowardness could be a true one and not a clue that something's recently changed. But can you balance all of these things at once? No, I don't think you can. Not without making some mistakes. And these kids are always making mistakes. They're getting things right too. I'm not sitting here like, oh god, these kids are so stupid, they're getting everything wrong. No, these kids are trying to figure out a horrible thing with very few clues, and they're trying to follow what clues they have, and the clues they have are actually leading them in a different direction. So they are actually working very well with what they have. Just keep in mind that they're not perfect. It is a balancing act. And sometimes that balancing act is gonna blip. Which is what happened with Ron earlier. And then Ron came back. We're also getting a clue that, of course, we do have people who are more understanding of these things and uh, are helping with those things because the, uh, the Illuminator actually assists Ron in getting back to them. And I think that's got to be one of my favorite lines, uh, which is, um, I guess, Dumbledore always knew I would have left. And then Harry going, no, he knew that you would want to come back. Because that's what it is. The Diffluminator didn't help him leave, it helped him came back. come back. Hmm, English. <laughs> it's been a bit of a crazy time. Uh. Sorry for the shorter video, but... It's a lot of puzzle pieces, and we're slowly clicking them back in. Ron's here, we're on a roll. Is that roll gonna keep going? We're about to come to a screeching stop. Screaming. Stop. There'll be a lot of screaming. But we're not quite there yet. First, we have story time. So I'm gonna keep reading, and I hope you do too. See you next time.